the most empowering hiring techniques, land the most desirable talent, launch your company towards massive success. This is the Higher Power Radio Show with your host, Rick Gerard. All right. Now, people like to join small organizations because they are challenging and fun. Now, there are very few rules and there's even less red tape. Now, as the company grows, it becomes necessary to formalize business processes. And with process comes rules. And before you know it, poof, someone shoots, gets shot in the eye and the Nerf guns get taken away. Now, some might think that this is a good thing, but the high performers who help build the business most often do not. Take away the fun and they will just go somewhere else. I'm Rick Gerard and welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. We help entrepreneurs and business leaders win-win the strongest people. We do so by sharing insights from top performing rebel entrepreneurs and business leaders like our guest, Mr. Steven Fradkin. Now, Steven is the founder and CEO of Nativa. They're a full service technology firm that's offering managed IT services, including cybersecurity, strategic consulting, cloud solutions, and business process automation. So he actually founded this company back in 2004 and has built it to over 450 employees, and they serve about 14,000, I'm sorry, 1,400 clients. Steven is an active member of a multitude of boards, including um, things like the White uh, Young Presidents Organization. But what's most important about him is he's a big believer in purpose-driven organizations, which leads, which he leads Nativa with that in mind which is what makes Stephen the perfect expert for today's topic. Stephen, welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. Thanks, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here. I didn't know I was a rebel, but that's uh, that's a fun thing. <laughs> well, you are today. <laughs> Let's just go with it. Oh, I mean, look at if you're bringing Nerf guns back, then, you know, you're a rebel. You're a rebel. All right. So, um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about a couple things today, but but one of the things that I like to really focus in on is making sure that we're focusing in on culture and we're building a strong organization where people want to be, right? And um, we get to a point a lot of times where as the organization grows, we end up kind of losing touch with those magical things that, that engaged like high performers in the first place, right? Now, I don't know if you've seen this correlation and I'm, I'm sure you've kind of maybe seen it in your business, but um, let's start with, Let's start with the Nerf gun story because uh, I, I I thought this was quite fun. Yeah, th thanks, Rick. And look, I've, I've been at this for a long time now, and and as you mentioned, we're a managed IT service provider, so we uh, we employ the top technical talent around uh, to help a multitude of small businesses uh, with all of their technology needs. So to get that rock star talent, and frankly, to understand that talent. Uh, we like to have a fun environment because it's 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 a it, frankly it's it's tough, right? Like usually yeah. when uh, people are calling us, <laughs> uh, they don't really want to talk to us, right? They have a problem that they want fixed, and that can lead to high tensions. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, we want to create an environment that challenges our techs to solve the biggest problems, to do that which only they can do, and then have fun on the journey, right? Like have joy in the journey. So yeah. you know, over over the years, our our team of rock star techs. Uh, took on, you know, playing with Nerf guns. This is something that we've seen in our competitors as well. You know, you might take a call with a client, finish it up, blow off some steam by shooting some, you know, Nerf guns at each other. And frankly, these engineers also would, uh, in true engineering form, you know, take out some springs and, and in, in improve the, uh, the, the aim, <laughs> the accuracy, the trajectory, the speed, uh, the, the impact of these uh, Nerf, Nerf guns too. And, you know, this went on for years and it was just fun in the background. And then one day, a manager in the organization, a, a, a young manager, uh, goes to, to basically correct one of the technicians on an issue that they just had. They had accidentally uh, turned off a remote computer, making it inaccessible and having to dispatch someone. So from about a foot from the tech, uh, he fires. And as he does it, the tech turns his head and it shoots him right in the eye. Now, this was awful, right? Modern, modern day Christmas story. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it was awful. I mean, he felt terrible. The tech, you know, was was mildly injured. Fortunately, it wasn't that big of a deal. And, 
you know, at the end of the day, everybody smiled, laughed. We, we took care of a quick eye doctor appointment on behalf of the tech. Everything was fine. But immediately our new, at the time, HR and legal team jumps in and says, we got to cut these Nerf guns, right? Like there is absolutely no scenario in which we can have these. The liability is too great. The next time we might not have a, a team member that just laughs it off and goes to the eye doctor and calls it a day. This could put us out of business. You got to end it all. Uh, so, so HR and legal mom and dad, right? Like essentially. Exactly. Yeah, I get it. And that's that's not a fun place to be. Sure isn't. So um, so what happened? So like, you know, they, they stepped in and they said, hey, look, at we we can't have this anymore. So we, yep. we started fighting that. Yeah, you know, I started to I started to really question, like, what are we doing here? Right. So I understand the need to limit liability and I understand the investment we made in these team members to make sure we can grow and scale in an appropriate way as an organization. Yeah. And so, like I obviously value what they're doing and I know that we need rules and framework as we grow. But I pushed right back to them and I said, there's got to be a different way to do this. What's the outside of the box thinking where we can limit our liability and not suck the fun out of the environment that we have and frankly take away a, a tool that our techs use to blow off steam? Uh, so yeah, and that's really important. And that's what keeps people there. Those those little things that keep people there. The people, um, I think, uh, really look forward to those things. And when mom and dad take them away, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, what am I doing here? Then they start to question their existence and why are they even there? Right. And, you know, it's 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 kind of mind boggling, right? Like like something like that, these Nerf gun experiences, like I could go back to team members that existed in the time that this whole thing went down. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about how we solve for it in a minute. But their memory that year, you could ask them, what did they get for their bonus? And they will have no idea. But they will remember every detail of the of the Nerf gun, gun is. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, you're listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. For our podcast listeners, we're going to take a quick educational moment from our sponsors. Hey, you're listening. To the so um, we're talking to Stephen Fradkin, um, who is the CEO of Nativa, Nativa. My bad. <laughs> and uh, we're discussing what happens with growth and how to preserve the elements that make a company so special, especially in the beginning of an organization. So uh, let's dive into how you solve that problem. Now, I would imagine that, um, you know, you run a core values comp based company, right? So, you know, I, I have, um, you know, one of the things that I've learned from a lot of CEOs is that core values are often like so important to keep intact and and as a ceo you really have to kind of be the protector of those values so how did how did this link into your core values <laughs> um got it so so just to take a step back and i'm by the way i'm sorry if my camera is blurry i keep trying to make that work but it's it's leaving it this way so i'm just going to embrace it for what it is you sure. know I, i'd say antiva is a purpose driven company so yeah. at the end of the day, you know, this is something that I started even before Antiva when I was a teenager and girls wouldn't pay attention to me in high school. I was a total geek. And over, you know, a 20 year period, this business just grew and grew and grew and grew because we did good work. We kept our clients and our team members stayed and it, it was wonderful. And yeah. at the end of the day, it grew to a point where I couldn't keep my finger on the pulse of everything that was going on anymore. So I elevated managers into different roles to keep things going. And as soon as I did that, the trains ran on time, but I noticed a material energy just evaporate from the business. And the best way I could describe it is before we had these managers, people would run through walls either because they were following me or because I asked them to. And so I took some time and I just reflected on, do I want to grow? Do I want to shrink? Um, and frankly, I was very serious. Like if we could go from 80 employees to 40 employees and just support law firms in a three block radius outside of Washington, DC, like I could keep my finger on the pulse of everything and keep that energy. Yeah. But what I kept coming back to were a couple of recurring experiences. The first would be when I'd run into a, a client at like a local networking or, or philanthropic event. And I'd say, you know, hi, I'm Steve, I'm with Antiva. And they'd say, oh, we know Antiva. Ever since we started working with them, we've been able to 
focus on growing our business because the technology just worked. And I'd leave that just smiling ear to ear. Yeah. What would happen even more often is every new employee that would start with us between three and six months of them starting, I'd have lunch or coffee with them. And I'd hear the same thing about 90% of the time with their opener. And it would sound something like, in the last 90 to 180 days, I've learned and grown more than I have in my prior job and or formal education. And I would remember that energy, it would just fill me up and I could go another two weeks just from that conversation, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. And so what I realized from that is that we existed to grow people and technology was just that accelerator. And as soon as I understood that purpose and I was able to go to the company and explain our why, right? Explain why we do what we do, not just what we do and how we do it. It was then that people started to be able to run through walls again. And that purpose combined with our core values of care, ownership, responsiveness, and excellence is ultimately what we use to motivate and drive people. And actually, as I say that, and, and if I'm going too off tangent, just let me know. But like it just ring, it, the, the word drive brings me back to like a book from Dan Pink called Drive. And yeah. his concept there was, you know, as long as the basic life needs of a team member are addressed, money's not the motivator. The motivator is going to be autonomy, mastery and purpose. And I found that to be absolutely true. But to be fully transparent, I struggled for a very long time micromanaging and keeping my finger on the pulse of everything and really like like making sure things were done just the way I would do it. And that wasn't something that was going to scale. And that was not something that was going to grow people at the rate that I really wanted to. Yeah, so exactly. That, that, purpose that I described to you. So going back to it, right? So existing to grow each other and then living those core values. That was the framework that was established for the team. And no matter what decisions they would then make on a day-to-day basis, even if they got it wrong, as long as they followed the purpose and core values, it was seen as an original mistake that we learn and grow from and all is good. And that opened up autonomy. And then ultimately, you know, as, and, and folks were able to fire on all all cylinders from that point forward. All right. So let's get back to the uh, mom taking away the Nerf guns scenario, right? So now we're at a point where, um, oh, I'm a, you were almost there. <laughs> um, so you've got a scenario. Oh, look at that. You're in full magic now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now how did you deal with the situation? Uh, give, me, give me kind of a step-by-step on how you dealt with the situation of bringing back the Nerf guns. Yeah. So first they, they, in theory, never left. Right. So before they were ripped out, it was, you know, obviously that was the advice of in-house counsel, our, our HR, which we, we call people, our people team. And, and then of course they, uh, you know, to, to cover all bases, they, they uh, checked with our outside corporate counsel as well. And it was absolutely unanimous that this all had to go away. And I pushed back. And I said, like, come on, guys, come up with a better strategy. What makes it so this can work? And I didn't solve it for them. I didn't sit in the room and brainstorm. And I said, come back to me with how it can exist. The, you know, versus the fact that we have to kill it and have no fun, right? Like the the idea of, yes, if you do this, (laughs) right? So what does that look like? So ultimately they hemmed and they hawed and they said, this is crazy, but they came back to me and they said, well, for starters, we would need protective eye care. We would need to have notifications out in the office advising that this might happen. And then we would have all employees that wish to participate in this sign a release. I was like, okay, let's do it. So within days, we had inside of that office, we had, uh, I'll, I'll never forget, it was like the Staples clear um, uh, garbage bins filled with uh, protective eye gear that Antiva provided to all employees. Uh, there were rules of engagement for the Nerf guns. They, the people that wanted to uh, participate did sign a waiver. And the gist of it was, if you're wearing the protective eye gear, you're assumed to be on board and in. If you are not, you're assumed to be out. So yeah. you are welcome to shoot at inanimate objects. And if you're going to shoot at people, they have to have their eye, protective eye gear on, and then they are assuming liability. And that worked out just fine. And by the way, there's been no 
uh, incidents or, or harm caused to any human technician, geek, or otherwise since. <laughs> or animals, of course. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so now, um, what was the what was the response from the employees? Uh, the, the, the truthfully, like the, there was a lot of obviously chatter as it related to the first incident of the person getting shot in the eye, right? So like, sure. that became was his name Ralphie, by the way. <laughs> no, <laughs> it became you know water cooler conversation. Okay, and then you know honestly, the the solution to it became things I heard about from like spouses of people or or significant others of people at company events years later. Like, I'll never forget it. Like, I'd I, I be at, like, a holiday party, and someone's spouse would come over to me and be like, oh, I heard about the Nerf guns and the waivers and the protective eye gear. Like, that's so hilarious, right? And those that little story, like, we took, not, not only did we keep it intact, we, like, created a legend <laughs> that, that got talked about in people's homes. And, like, just think about it. Like, as opposed to being that person going home be like, oh, my job sucked today. I got a call from a client. He yelled at me for four hours and just didn't even let me fix the computer, right? Like that that wasn't the narrative, even though that yeah. happened that day. The narrative was, let me tell you this ridiculous story about what happened at work and how it was solved, right? And, and that really created a legend. You know, it, and it also creates retention in a way too, because people know that within your organization, they can still have fun, right? And, and there's a point where work doesn't become fun anymore. I think when it gets to a, a corporate point where like, you know, you really have to be super corporate, it, it the, the early adopters, I mean, the early people who bought in and helped build the company, they usually bow out. That's usually, as a headhunter, I used to love to see that sort of thing happen because you knew you're gonna get attrition and I can reach out to all those people and just find the ones who weren't really happy about all these changes taking place. Yep, uh, to totally agree. And like, by no means are we perfect, right? Like we've made a ton of original mistakes. Sure. We go as we learn from them, we adapt, we grow. And at the end of the day, we want to be that talent house where the best people want to come, want to stay, want to grow, right? Like that's what we're all about, right? So yeah. so that that's 100% accurate. <laughs> so how is this story or like, how is this, policy translated you think into um your talent acquisition or your ability to attract talent to your organization yeah you know i think i think part of first of all it's just it's just a story that gets to be told right like a recruiter sure. can share it when they're when they're interviewing with people at the company like things like this come up and at the end of the day like we really want to be in an environment where people can have joy on the journey like we are we are on this planet for a fixed period of time, mm -hmm. right? And and we we want to make an impact while we're here, right? So that impact is our purpose of growing each other. If you fit that model, it's a great fit for you. And we, yeah. want, to, we want to have joy on the journey. We want to smile. We want to laugh. We want to be positive. Like I, I'm speaking for myself here and I want to surround myself with people like that. So, so sure. again, the more of these things that, that have come up over the years, the, the more we're able to give real life examples to have. Right. Like, yes, we've grown. Yes, we've become more corporate. Yes, we have, you know, more policies and procedures than we ever have before. But at the end of the day, you know, we are willing to live in the gray area as long as that purpose and core values are followed. Yeah. And you're still having you still have a fun environment to work in. So how does this translate, do you think, to like uh, things like employee referrals, uh, referrals or, or like, you know, yeah, I mean, which to me is like usually the, the biggest indicator of whether or not people enjoy working at your company. Yeah, no, th thanks for that question. And uh, look, it, I can't relate what I'm about to tell you specifically to Nerf guns. Right. But but to give you an example, last year alone, we had 114 referrals for people to come work at Antiva from existing employees. Now, not, yeah. not all of them were hired, right? In fact, you know, maybe only 25% or so. But the fact that folks are coming and sharing that is fantastic. Um, sure. and, and obviously, we, we talk about it. We want people to do that. Um, and and we, we even incentivize people to do that. But the actual action being taken is really meaningful for us. 
Yeah, it's really meaningful too, because the truth is, you know, typically when you get a re an employee referral, that's the, that's the biggest proof point that you can possibly have as a company that you're doing something right. And, and, you know, like usually when it's a lower number, what ends up happening is like people are just referring their friends who are out of work looking for a job and they're just kind of trying to find a, a place to land as yep. opposed to people really wanting to work for your organization. That's right. man. Good work, Steve. Yeah, look, I, to be honest, like we have an incredible team. So much of this stuff is just coming from them being an environment that allows them to be creative and think differently. Um, and, you know, I, I'd say, you know, very little at this stage has anything to do with me, right? Like these are people doing their own thing in a meaningful way, guided by these principles that I share. Well, I think it has a lot to do with you, quite frankly, because it does come from the principles are usually the top down, right? So like if you're living your principles, that's one of the biggest uh, kind of myths that I see out there is that, you know, we, we create uh, we create like uh, core values. We create things based on like a a kind of mythical yeah. company that we're trying to create, as opposed to what we actually live. And when you actually live it, it's it's a huge testimonial because it does trickle down. Yeah, and and you know, Rick, I was fortunate enough, and you know, if there's entrepreneurs that are you know growing their businesses right now, like I I would deeply encourage them to be intentional, right? Like the reality is, like it's my purpose it's my values right yeah um and once i was clear on what that was and i could be authentic about it the reality is people either aligned or they didn't and yeah. the ones that didn't left the ones that did grew and blossomed and as we recruit we look for that particular personality and i'm not saying we're right and others are wrong it's just having that clarity is so important and and frankly you know, whoever is leading has the opportunity to do that and make it what they can personally connect with. And when they do that, I believe passion really comes out, authenticity comes out, and people see that. And that adds to trust, which adds to people wanting to, you know, come into a business, stay there and grow. Which ultimately leads to the business growing and pro higher profitability and everything else, which is good for everybody, right? It's good for the, the health of the business. Shoot, I, I love this. Um, Steve, uh, what would you say would be kind of two or three key takeaways you can give the audience that they can plug into their business today? Yeah, so look, I, I touched on this already. So so I'll, I'll repeat what you heard and then maybe I'll add an extra one. So sure. uh, first I'd say just just having aligned motivation around your purpose, right? Like, like I shared with Antiva for years, 20 years, everybody knew what we did and how we did it, but nobody knew right? Myself included. So really, again, know your why and be able to communicate it clearly, both to your internal and external customers, right? Yep. Uh, the other is you're going to win talent, right? So this is another concept. You will win talent by differentiating yourself from the competition. As our competition grew with private equity sponsors and more maturity and acquisitions and bringing in hired gun CEOs with policy and procedure and structure and all of this, it created an opportunity where, of course, we have that. But if we're still able to allow people to have joy on the journey and do things differently than these competitors and make the experience more fun, we have a leg up. And that leg up doesn't necessarily require us to pay more, right? It's just, no. it's, an, it's an opportunity to differentiate just on being a fun place to be. So again, by the, way, yeah. by the way, I've actually learned that like, most people will accept a job necessarily based on pay, but on the value they get from the organization outside of the, the paycheck. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, yeah. and so, so that's kind of the second pocket, right? So just, just you, you win talent by differentiating yourself from the competitors, right? And there's lots sure. of ways you can do that. Just be different, look different. And then you know, finally, and I, I touched on this earlier, uh, but you know, I, I recently, um, read the Elon Musk documentary and learned about his algorithm, which ultimately starts with questioning every requirement, right? So when legal and HR came and said, you must get rid of this, it's a huge liability, I questioned that requirement, right? And what I- Oh, the entrepreneur in you. <laughs> yeah. And, and I would encourage everyone at every level, entrepreneur or not, 
to question every requirement. Don't do it rudely, but really understand, you know, did that requirement come from 1952 in a world that is very different than today? And if so, can we change it? And when you're questioning it, like, who did it come from? When? Like, get the person's name. Go right at it, right? And you still may wind up in the same place, but chances are you can enact change, use that to differentiate and create memories. Yeah. That is so perfect. All right. I have nothing to add to that. Stephen, thanks so much for your time investment today. And I want to welcome you to the Higher Power Radio community. Now, what would be the best way in which uh, members of our audience could find you, find your company, all that good stuff? Uh, thanks, Rick. Uh, you can find Antiva at our website, which is www.antiva.com. That's N as in Nancy, T as in Tom, I as in Igloo, V as in Victor, A as in Alpha.com. Uh, you can also reach out to me directly via email at Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, at Antiva.com, or call me at 703 738 2905. Dude, I love you're putting your number out there. You're like the second person who's done that in the history of this show, which is fantastic. I do it all the time too. So thank you for tuning to this week's episode of Higher Power Radio. A huge thanks to our team, Brian Colburn, Andrea Ballin, and Ayla Gerard. If you're listening to the show, please subscribe, review, and share. Um, send us an email, reach out to us because we just kicked off the show again and we want to make sure that we're continuing to provide value to you as a leader. You can join the Higher Power Radio community at higher, H-I-R-E, power, P-O-W-E-R, radio.com. Or you can drop me an email at rick at intertrue.ai. Tune in next Tuesday. Our guest is going to be Gary Frey. Gary is the founder and connector of BGWCPA. I'm your host, Peter Gerard, and you have been listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. Aloha. Thank you for listening to Higher Power Radio. Catch our LinkedIn Live Show every Tuesday at noon or download the podcast on iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, or your favorite podcast platform. We appreciate you joining us on Higher Power Radio with your guide to hiring success, Rick Gerard. Boom.